Hey everyone, welcome to Holistic Lifestyle Tips, Getting Real About the Woo Woo. I'm Becky Russell, owner of wellness company Hope Essential, and I am an essential oil educator and a holistic lifestyle educator. I just love to teach. And I feel very passionately about sharing the message about a holistic lifestyle, and that includes the essential oils because they are wonderful tools to help limit the amount of chemicals you put on and in your body, which ages you. And uh, my whole mission is to help people age with a quality of life. I don't wanna just get old, I wanna have a quality of life. So um, I developed this series to share my holistic approach to life, what that looks like, and to maybe open your mind to a new way, a different way to approach wellness. Holistic means treating the entire body, mind, body, and soul from the inside out, and not just treating symptoms, but getting to the root cause. Uh, the healthcare system is really a disease treatment system, and I don't feel that serves us, and I have chosen another way, and I feel it's served me in a pretty good way so far. I am 62, and uh, by all rights, since I am, I have been diagnosed as pre-diabetic in the past, uh, by 40, typically the women in my family uh, have been diagnosed as uh, type 2 diabetic and then starts the whole medications and you never get off them and your quality of life keeps going down. And I didn't think, I, I wanted to see if there was a different way. And so I just want to, every week, uh, introduce something to you that you may already know or maybe you don't. And um, just sort of open your mind to a different, different way. It, holistic doesn't mean that you have to be a certain age or, or a certain type of person. Just, just be open. Hey, Carrie. And uh, so tonight, I am going to talk more about physical wellness. Every week I try to alternate uh, between physical wellness, spiritual wellness, and emotional wellness because you need to, to be well in all three. And uh, sometimes the topic encompasses just one or two, sometimes all three. Tonight's topic is, is pretty much physical. And it's something near and dear to my heart because it is connected to diabetes. And we are going to talk about the glycemic index and the glycemic load. And I don't know if you've heard of either one. The glycemic index is probably a little more well known. And um, let me tell you what the uh, definition of that is. The glycemic index indicates how rapidly a carbohydrate is digested and released as glucose, which is sugar, hey Pam, and into the bloodstream. But the glycemic index does not take into account the amount of carbohydrate in a food. So the glycemic load is a better indicator of how a carbohydrate food will affect blood sugar. So the, the glycemic load is an equation that takes into account the planned portion size of a food as well as the glycemic index of the food. So for instance, why, why is this important? Um, if you only go by the glycemic index, which it was never intended for anyone to do that uh, from what I've read. It was supposed to be just a tool, but we jumped on this bandwagon not really understanding everything and um, certain foods that are high in carbohydrates, uh, high glycemic index, such as uh, watermelon. People would see that high score and think that's a bad food and not eat it. But what they don't understand when they're not putting in, you know, understanding that the glycemic load um, makes the score low because we don't eat as much watermelon in a serving as we would typically eat, um, say, uh, pasta. We tend to eat bigger portions 
of potatoes and pasta and those kind of things. And so we had, you know, not understanding this, people were totally ignoring watermelon and carrots and, you know, foods that had really great nutrients and vitamins um, because they were looking at those high numbers. So the glycemic load gives you a more realistic look at what those foods do, uh, how they affect your blood sugar. And so um, I do want to stress, though, that not everyone is on board with this. So just like anything else, you need to do your research. One uh, research uh, item that I used was this book. It's the Glycemic Load Diabetes Solution. And it's, I think it was published in 2012. Um, but what makes it really interesting is the author is a cardiologist that had been treating diabetics and just um, repeating the typical advice, just lose some weight, eat healthier, see you in six months, whatever, however that goes and not understanding why people weren't managing their diabetes and so forth. And so he was then diagnosed as type two diabetic and it rocked his world. And so because he has that medical background, he did not just passively accept what he was told. What, it didn't make sense to him once he was on that other side of it. So he started testing his blood sugar after every uh, thing he put in his body because he wanted to fully understand how everything worked. And so I know a lot of diabetics, hey, Pamela, um, that... Well, my my mom was guilty of this. Uh, a lot of times she only checked once a day until someone sort of got on her about that. But, um, you know, there's a, there's a typical response to things such as caffeine. For some diabetics, caffeine does not affect their sugar. For others, it does. But how will you know that if you are only testing your blood sugar right after you eat. You'll only, you'll assume it's the food. And so what is so interesting about this book is, I'm sure not everyone is gonna be as um, on attack as this guy was, but honestly, why wouldn't you? Because you need to understand how your body is affected by certain foods. And I'm not just talking diabetics here, this is everybody. There are so many food sensitivities out there because of all the stuff in our food, um, because we don't have good gut health to begin with. So um, this is good advice for everybody, although it doesn't necessarily mean uh, checking your sugar levels, but you can, um, you know, keep a food diary to see how you're affected by certain foods. I know later in life, dairy bothers me now. It never used to, but it does now. So I wouldn't know that if I hadn't been tested or if I hadn't been keeping a food diary. So it's not just diabetics. Um, everyone needs to take more control, more ownership of their health, in my humble opinion. So with the glycemic index um, and with the glycemic load, um, what this doctor found was we focus so much on sugar, get rid of the white sugar, get rid of the white sugar. And it's so focused on that, that a lot of people are not focusing on the white flour, the white rice. We do know that now better now than in 2012, but there's still a lot of people that do not understand how fast those foods turn to sugar. But he took a very proactive approach, and he this book really um, describes how he did that. Um, I would highly recommend it also to anyone who's been diagnosed pre-diabetic uh, or with insulin resistance, because it explains in layman terms 
how everything works in your body, what that food does, how it goes through all the organs and all that in layman's term where you can understand. It's very important to understand why you're being, for me, why you're being told to do certain things. And so don't just tell me don't eat this or don't eat that or lose weight. I, I want specifics. So although I am not a diabetic, um, I am so proactive about my health because I have been diagnosed as a pre-diabetic in the past. Um, I want to know as much as I can about it. So I encourage you to be very proactive. I'm not telling you what to do or how to do it, but I'm just giving you some knowledge, some uh, direction. Um, again, I don't know if he has an updated version of this, but his story is very interesting. He has some uh, recipes in the back, um, but his big thing is, we need to worry about white flour every bit as much as the white sugar, if not more. And so, uh, you know, the purpose of these uh, videos is not to tell you what to do. It's only to sort of give you teasers about the things that are out there, maybe some topics you haven't heard about. And to make things a little more confusing, I'm going to read a little. Uh, snippet from here. Uh, some nutrition experts believe that people with diabetes should pay attention to both the glycemic index and the glycemic load. Hey, Valentina. Uh, the American Diabetes Association, on the other hand, says that, that the total amount of carbohydrate in a food, rather than its glycemic index or load, is a stronger predictor of what will happen to blood sugar. So. This is where it gets very frustrating and can be overwhelming when you have conflicting um, advice. So my advice to you is you have to understand your body and you have to go with what resonates with you. I don't necessarily agree with the uh, standard approach. So I'm going to be more open to things like this and what information he is um, imparting. I will put this uh, in the uh, comments afterward. But it's the Glycemic Load Diabetes Solution. Rob Thompson, MD, is the author. There may be a newer version of this. I'm not sure, but I know he had a cookbook and other things associated with it. But um, I just thought it was a really good resource. So uh, I just want to encourage you to be proactive and be open to some other things. Uh, I don't agree with everything he has in here. Um, rarely are we going to agree with every single thing, but we can usually learn something from what we uh, research. Uh, but do your own research and honor that we all are all uniquely made individuals, just like with the essential oils. Peppermint works most for most people for relieving head tension. But some people, it gives them a headache. So you try a different oil. You try a di something different. We need to honor that we are all so uniquely made. That's how God created us. So it's not one size fits all. It's not one medication fits all. It's not one approach fits all. And so um, I really encourage you to research the glycemic load. The glycemic index is part of the formula that gets you to the glycemic load. And I don't want you to think either about uh, bad foods, good foods, that's not a good thing. The food is not the enemy. Um, we have to um, just understand how everything works in our body. The other thing I wanna bring up is a lot of people are on this, um, this uh, train of thought that everything in moderation, that's okay if you're pretty much healthy. But if you're a diabetic, moderation is going to kill you or it's going to hurt you because you're, you're going to have more immediate uh, negative reactions to moderation. 
and it moderation will eventually hurt all of us if we're not careful but for diabetics until you get your baseline until you understand how your body reacts to certain things and how how quickly exercise will bring your uh, sugar levels down and so forth until you understand how to control your blood sugars moderation is not your friend but here's the other thing all of us should eat like a diabetic is supposed to we all should so it's not it's not that no one else has to do what you do it's that we're not and we should so let's all join together let's research let's take um, control of our health more I want to be your advocate I know there are people who do not have support at home they are overwhelmed. They don't have the energy to research. I, I will be that resource for you because I am so passionate about it. So um, reach out to me. I, will, if, I don't have all the answers, but I know a lot of people and I can direct you to them. So check out my website, hopeessential.com for all things holistic and sign up for my news, newsletter if you don't get it already, a monthly newsletter. And check me out uh, on Facebook, Hope Essential uh, LLC, and you'll see all sorts of educational things and um, be updated on events and classes. I'm going to try to do more online things because of the situation we're in now. And I'm so happy to have you with me tonight, and I hope you learned something. Comment below if you've heard of either the glycemic index or glycemic load and maybe what an aha moment was from this. And till next time, choose you, choose natural, choose now.